Hello, and thank you for joining HCET and Wisconsin Department of Health Services, or Wisconsin DHS, for our clinical and case management practices for antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea module. We will learn how to identify and manage patients who may have antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea, or ARGC. Through this module, you will learn when ARGC may be suspected among patients, how clinicians may assess for it, along with methods of specimen collection for culture and antimicrobial susceptibility testing. You will also learn the best practices for patient interviews with disease intervention specialists, also known as DIS, or other staff from local and tribal health departments who are responsible for case follow-up. As the risk for ARGC has risen globally, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, has allocated funding to state and local or tribal health departments to respond to this emergent threat. Wisconsin DHS has relied upon funding from the Strengthening the U.S. Response to Resistant Gonorrhea grant, also known as the SURGE grant, to monitor for cases of ARGC in Wisconsin. As of 2024, the CDC has retired the SURGE grant. It is being replaced with Combating Antimicrobial Resistant Gonorrhea and Other STIs, or CARGOS, grant. As part of Wisconsin's work on ARGC, the Wisconsin DHS and the Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory have partnered to set up a Center of Excellence for ARGC testing. The Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory is an expert in testing gonorrhea samples for antibiotic resistance. This testing is available for clinicians or local or tribal health departments throughout Wisconsin. For additional information on ARGC testing methods, view Diagnostic Practices for Antibiotic Resistant Gonorrhea. A link has been provided in the description of this video. If you need assistance now, contact Wisconsin DHS at dhsdphargc at wi.dhs.gov. This section will discuss clinical practices necessary to identify and respond to patients with suspected treatment failure or STF, or other signs of a resistant infection. Clinics partnered with Wisconsin DHS's SURGE grant work to collect additional samples for culture-based testing that may be used for antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Partner clinics also ensure all patients with gonorrhea are treated with up-to-date CDC-recommended treatments. Additionally, the clinics request certain patients return for a test of cure and monitor for suspected treatment failure among patients. Wisconsin DHS can also assist clinics and health departments in Wisconsin to do this testing if they have a patient or client who may have antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea. Typical gonorrhea testing is performed through NATS, which can only diagnose whether or not a patient has gonorrhea. Culture-based testing is the only current way to test for antibiotic resistance of gonorrhea samples. This is important for clinicians who have patients who may have gonorrhea. If a patient tests positive for gonorrhea, they should receive CDC-recommended first-line treatment. As of 2021, the recommended treatment is an injection of 500 mg of ceftriaxone. For patients with allergies to cephalosporins, the CDC's 2021 treatment guidelines has alternative recommendations. If a patient is still reporting symptoms three to five days following a CDC-recommended regimen with no new sexual activity reported, suspected treatment failure is possible. A test of cure can also identify if an STF is possible. A test of cure is where a treated patient with gonorrhea returns to the clinic in a recommended time frame for follow-up testing. When a patient reports no sexual activity following treatment, the test of cure can confirm if the treatment was effective to rid of the infection. 
a positive test of cure after receiving recommended treatment could indicate STF. In both scenarios, it is necessary to coordinate with Wisconsin DHS by emailing the address shown on the screen. Once contacted, staff from Wisconsin DHS will ask a few questions about the patient to ensure testing is appropriate. If appropriate, there will be a specimen collection kit sent to the clinic. Once collection is complete, the kit will have antimicrobial susceptibility testing through the Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory. This next section will provide guidance on collecting patient samples for culture and AST. This will include a description of what is needed for specimen collection and a demonstration of how those tools are used. While not required, it is recommended that clinicians collect samples from any parts of the body that could have been exposed to gonorrhea during sexual activity, including the oropharynx, endocervical region, rectum, and penis based on the patient's report. In Wisconsin, clinics monitoring for ARGC may choose from two tools for collecting specimen, e-swab or in-tray. For both, sample collection will proceed as with other testing modalities. These would be provided by the Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory. Be sure to use the swabs and materials provided in the specimen collection kit. Samples collected using e-swab are placed into the liquid media included in the specimen collection kit. This helps to preserve the sample until it reaches the Milwaukee Health Department laboratory for testing. Specimen collected via e-swab must be received and processed by the laboratory within 24 hours of specimen collection. In most instances, you will be provided with an e-swab and a test tube containing transport medium. When ready for specimen collection, carefully open the package, set the test tube aside, and collect specimen from any sites where a gonorrhea infection may have occurred. Shown here is specimen collection on a vaginal model. The swab should then be put into the tube containing transport medium, snapping off the swab handle where indicated before closing the tube. Specimen may also be collected from the throat, rectum, and urethra. Swabs collected using in-tray are smeared onto a petri plate containing a medium which allows the sample to culture onto the plate and remain stable for transport to the Milwaukee Health Department laboratory. Samples collected via in-tray must be received and processed by the lab within 36 hours of specimen collection. To start, you will want to prepare the swab and inoculating loop. Then, open the sticky film of the in-tray. You may then take the swab and collect specimen from any sites where a gonorrhea infection may occur, depending on the patient's reported symptoms and sexual practices. Once specimen are collected, the swab should be smeared across the entray in an S shape. Then, the white inoculating loop should be streaked across the plate. Lastly, the white circular CO2 chamber should be punctured, and the plate may be covered and stored for incubation and shipping. Specimen may also be collected from the throat, rectum, and urethra. The Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory will report results of the testing to the original clinic and Wisconsin DHS within five to seven days of receiving the sample. If the patient's result is positive and the antimicrobial susceptibility testing indicates reduced susceptibility or resistance to ceftriaxone or cefixim, Wisconsin DHS will respond to the case. It will be necessary to work closely with a DIS or other similar staff to provide case management for the patient. Before we move on, let's do a knowledge check. 
Which of the testing options below would the Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory include in a specimen collection kit when requested? Select all that apply. A. NATS B. E-swab C. Intray D. All of the above B and C are correct. If a clinic or health department requests assistance with a possible case of antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea, the Milwaukee Health Department Laboratory may provide a specimen collection kit, including either an e-swab or an intray. Next, we will discuss case management best practices for patients who may have ARGC. Best practices discussed in this section are patient interview recommendations, maintaining confidentiality, partner elicitation and notification, case closure. It is most common for case management to be through DIS, but other local or tribal health departments may rely on other staff for these duties depending on their capacity. When a DIS receives a patient's report, it is best to review the patient's records before contacting them. If it is suspected that the patient may have ARGC, Disease intervention specialists and Wisconsin DHS should work together prior to reaching out to the patient. Reviewing the patient's record will help explain why the patient was tested. It is also important to make sure adequate testing, treatment, and care plans are in place. When discussing the patient with the reporting clinician, ask about the patient's signs or symptoms along with their history of STI testing and diagnoses. This information will help determine if this patient is at risk for STF or ARGC. Every patient interview is different and can bring their own challenges and successes. It is best to tailor the approach to discussing the infection to the patient. Everyone has different interview styles. Choose a style that keeps the interview and the conversation client-centered. DIS at Wisconsin DHS use the LOVER method, which stands for Listen, Observe, Verify, Evaluate, and Respond. This is helpful for figuring out the best way to approach any patient being interviewed. The style and approach you use will give you better luck in creating rapport with the patient. Having rapport makes a comfortable environment for the patient. The more comfortable the patient is, the more they will share. Remember, minimizing the use of medical jargon can help the patient better understand what you share. When contacting a patient, verify the client's identity and explain that anything they share will remain confidential. Confidentiality is one way to create a trusting relationship with the patient. A patient may be unaware of their gonorrhea diagnosis, so it is best to begin by notifying them of their result. If the patient has ARGC, explain that their sample showed signs of reduced susceptibility to the antibiotic used to treat their infection. Share that this means that the infection may not have been completely cleared by the antibiotic used to treat it. Next, Reassure the patient that they can still receive treatment and that you're there to support them as they work with their healthcare provider to be appropriately treated. It is important to help the patient understand the role of DIS in stopping the spread of this infection. Also, share how important they are in participating in a partner services interview. Both of you can help find other cases and ensure they receive the appropriate care. Always address any questions or concerns the patient may have about this infection. Asking open-ended questions helps to enrich the conversation and leads to more information. Open-ended questions begin with who, what, when, where, why, and how, and invite the patient to provide more detail in their responses. Sometimes you may receive pushback from the patient. If a patient is uncomfortable, they will not provide information. 
in these situations, patient motivators will help you in building comfort for the patient. Patient motivators are conversational approaches used during an interview. An example of a patient motivator may be, Everything you and I discussed is confidential, and I take your privacy very seriously. Or, while this infection is curable, infections like this open you up to a lot of others that are not. If a patient has already refused to work with DIS, a motivator may be, I hear your hesitation with working with me based on your past experiences, but I hope I can change your mind. Resistant gonorrhea is a new threat that we are attempting to stop before it starts. Your answer to these questions provides us with what we need to take care of you and others. These motivators build trust and encourage a patient to share sensitive information. It is best practice to let patients know that all questions are asked of every patient. A patient can share that they feel uncomfortable at any time. Being flexible to the patient's needs allows the DIS to move to the next question, reword it, or come back to it later. The longest part of an interview for a DIS is when talking through the patient's social, medical, and partner history. A patient may or may not be willing to share this information. It is important to continue using open-ended questions and patient motivators. Additionally, you should provide education for risk reduction to avoid reinfection or re-exposure. Provide ways the patient can educate their partners and any referrals they or their partners may need. Given a diagnosis of ARGC, it will be particularly important to track down as many partners of the patient as possible. This helps to prevent further spread of ARGC in Wisconsin. Getting a patient to provide the name of their partner or partners may be challenging. Patient motivators will be your best tool in receiving this information. Partner elicitation from patients diagnosed with an STI allows DIS to also help partners of patients. If patients share their partners, DIS will contact and notify the named partners of the exposure to gonorrhea while protecting the patient's identity, recommend testing and treatment options for the partners, and provide any necessary referrals for testing or other services that may be needed. Some examples of patient motivators for encouraging patients to share the name and contact information for their partners include, you have received testing and treatment. How certain are you that your partners have received proper care? How are they going to receive the correct care if they don't know exactly what they have? I'm not here to judge. I want to make sure everyone is healthy. Everything we talk about today is confidential, meaning your information is only shared with those involved in your medical care. If patient motivators are unsuccessful or the patient is still hesitant to share, the DIS can explain why this information is so important. Some examples include... Sharing partner information is important because it ensures they receive a notification of a possible exposure. It is important to share because it allows a DIS to stop the spread of ARGC by preventing further exposure. It is important to share because other people with this infection may not know where to go or what to do, and DIS can help. It is not uncommon for a patient to be uncomfortable with the DIS contacting their partner or partners. Many patients don't know that they can choose how they want their partners to be notified. There are five partner notification types available. These help all partners receive notification of their possible exposure. Client notification. The patient informs their partner or partners of their possible exposure. The patient will refer them to counseling, testing, and other support services discussed. Provider notification. The DIS, with the consent of the patient, informs the partner or partners of possible exposure. The DIS then refers them to counseling, testing, and other support services. Dual notification. The patient informs any partners of their infection in the presence of the DIS. Contract. 
The DIS and patient negotiate a time frame for the patient to inform their partner or partners of exposure. If the patient is unable to inform them within the agreed upon time frame, the DIS has the permission to notify partners. The DIS can refer partners to STI counseling, testing, and other support services. Third party notification. The partner or partners receive notification from a professional other than the DIS, such as a private physician, of their possible exposure. The information collected from an interview is important in establishing the best plan for the patient and their partners. Documented information from an interview is also important for data collection. With more information, the health department can better handle infections and stop the spread of disease. So, it is important for anyone working with a patient diagnosed with an STI to provide detailed documentation in the Wisconsin Electronic Surveillance System, or WEDS. If more information or clarification is necessary, a re-interview could be helpful. A re-interview is also an acceptable way for checking if a patient's testing, treatment, or partner notifications are going or went well. A re-interview could also be helpful to identify STF. If patients are still reporting symptoms, this may be a sign of STF. For concerns of STF, it is best to encourage the patient to return to the clinic for a test of cure. Before closing a case, Wisconsin DHS and the CDC will need to confirm that the treatment provided for the infection was appropriate. Once DIS have confirmed that the patient was successfully treated and all partners are found, tested, and treated, the case is ready for closure. It is time for a knowledge check. When may patient motivators be useful? Select any that apply. A. When a patient does not want to talk to you. B. When a patient feels uncomfortable sharing information. C. When the patient refuses to share information on their partners. D. When contacting patient's partners to encourage them to seek testing and treatment. A, B, C, and D are all correct. Patient motivators are helpful conversational tools to use during an interview with a patient or their partners, especially when they are uncomfortable, lack trust, or do not want to participate in an interview. Congratulations on completing the clinical and case management practices for antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea module. You should now be prepared to monitor for, investigate, and manage patients diagnosed with ARGC. This work is crucial for our continued effort to prevent further emergence of ARGC in Wisconsin. Stay in touch. Sign up for our STI email list by visiting the link in the description box. Email the Wisconsin DHS Epidemiology Coordinator for questions related to ARGC or to request a consultation for a potential case. All the resources and links mentioned in this video can be found in the description box below.